for our second stop, we take our first journey out of the state of Minnesota. A brief trip north of the bridge to Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Located in the snow-filled abyss above the Straits of Mackinac. An area of the country where snowmobiles outnumber the population of cities and snowplows are the lifeblood of the community. Our team's goal is to expose the untold tale of the fish that roam the slush-filled water pockets of this region. An area that's remote, challenging, and most of all, unforgiving. And if the stories of this place are true, the crappie fishing here could be prolific. Welcome to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And that right there is a beautiful, fresh crappie taco. I was gonna give this to somebody else, but I think I'm just gonna smash one. Yep. That's exactly what I was hoping it was gonna taste like. And it's really good. So I got a bunch of fish made up here. I think the whole squad's gonna sit down, smash a bunch of tacos, and then who knows what's gonna happen. Sounds like the bite's picking up out there. Came up really hot. Ooh, nice crappie. There we go. Bingo. All right. That is what I'm talking about. Pinhead minnow. Just barely got it, but he came up mega aggressive on that thing. Nice little Wonder Bread one. 16 pounds. Doink. Heck yeah. All right, let's get back down there. There were like three. Got him. There's another nice one. There's another one that's going about ten and a half. That one, again, came about halfway down on a tikka minnow in the pink color with the white polka dots. I'm marking another one. We're getting, uh, pink's gonna be cooking tonight, so we gotta couple more 10 and a half to 11 so that we're gonna try to keep and hopefully we get a nice meal for tonight that and uh, they are just absolutely choke slam on this this tikka minnow I'm just ripping it as hard as I can I'll drop back down I won't be paying attention all of a sudden one will just come in at my jig so Yeah, hooked up. That one just came out of nowhere. That was sick. Oh yeah, another crappie. That one, a little smaller than the last one. Cool. Super, whoa, super aggressive. Pinhead again, that little Wonder Bread guy. 
Right there, we'll throw that one back. See ya. There's another one. Ooh. That one also feels good. Holy Oh my gosh. There we go. There's a nice one. On the Tika Minnow. Waldo just started yelling. I got to He's hanging in the house. Waldo, what do you got going on? We're all hopping around I out here. A nice little one. Look at that. 12 and a half. In the ice house. Um, that one, I was just snap jigging a Tika Minnow actually. Let's see here. Oh yeah, one sixteen thousand that hot pink color with the white polka dots and this guy was about halfway down. I'm in like twenty five foot of water, twenty six foot of water right now. And that guy was only about ten foot down and he absolutely crunched that Tika minnow. There's a beautiful twelve and a half. We're gonna release this one. We usually like to keep the smaller ones and that one. Oh, get away. Whoa. <laughs> He got stuck in the other isolator. There we go. Um, <laughs> so normally we like to keep the smaller ones. Anything over 12, we usually we put those back just for genetics purposes. Um, but yeah, it seems like the bite's starting to get better. Uh, the boys are still out sharpshooting. I felt like I was going to take a little bit different approach and sit in the Yukon. And uh, What do you think of this house, by the way? New XT. Awesome. awesome. It... Uh, you don't hit the roof of the, the ice house with the hook set. Um, you know, people who are tall, I'm not, can stand in this thing. Uh, it's absolutely great. This house is very roomy and it's actually pretty big for a two man. So, um, but everyone else is out hole hopping. I felt like I was just gonna see if I can periodically have fish move through and uh, take the other approach, a little bit more relaxing approach. So I'm gonna chill in the ice house while the guys Hop around, see if we can't get another one. Griff, I got denied twice there, and then I put my jig in the glow ring and I dropped it down and it instantly ate it. There's one I just put my jig in the glow ring to glow it up a little bit, and that seemed to switch his mood totally. Came up twice on it and wouldn't eat. Boom. Glow pin head. Alright guys, so we're back at our cabin here at the root cellar and we're going to do a little bit of cooking. We had a really long day on the ice, so we're looking forward to eating some of this food. Doing something a little bit different today. Normally we're cooking fish. Today is not the case. We're cooking venison today. So early, early this morning before we even headed out, I got this all prepped up. I got a whole front quarter from a deer that uh, I trimmed up last night. Got it all ready to go in this slow cooker and it's been simmering all day long. So it's been in there about 12 hours and it is looking super tender right now. So I braised it down in a really, really nice uh, mixture of things. So I got, I, I steeped in a pot just for like 15, 20 minutes, um, some tomatoes, poblano peppers, dried ancho chilies, um, some serrano peppers, uh, garlic, and some onion, and then put it all in a blender with some cilantro and lime juice. Put it all in there with some beef stock and it's just been simmering away. So it smells unbelievable in here. The meat is done. So what I'm gonna do is take all that out, pull it from the bone, shred it up, and uh, mince up a little white onion, some cilantro, and put together some birria tacos. And I'm looking forward to this one. So I'm gonna get this meat shredded up, get these things cut, and we're gonna be, we're gonna be eating pretty dang good here. So the cool thing about this recipe is that part of the braising liquid was black rifle coffee. Uh, we have a code for that if you wanna get black rifle, you wanna cook with it, you wanna drink it. Uh, the code is BLASTOFF25 and you can get a discount right there on anything that Black Rifle sells. But coffee in this with the chilies, hmm. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is cut up this onion. I wanna cut this pretty fine because this is gonna go inside the tacos. So I'm just gonna half that onion and then just do it into a pretty fine dice. 
and then just mix it up with some cilantro and just set that aside till everything's ready to go. And then I'll show you how to put it in the tacos. All right, so what I'm gonna do is get this meat out of here. It does have a bone in a couple chunks of this, so what I'm gonna do is pull that out. The meat is literally falling off of the bone and just get it into this pan right here and then we'll just pull it apart. It is unbelievably tender right now. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I got this meat all shredded up right now and all this liquid is absolutely delicious. So what I'm gonna do is use a ladle and just put uh, one or two ladles full just all over this meat just to keep it unreal moist. And then we're also gonna put some of this in a bowl that we're gonna put on top of the tacos once they're all said and done. I got a griddle set up right over here and I'm gonna get the tacos ripping on this while this meat just chills out, but it is smelling delicious right now. So I'm gonna get one of these put together. I'm actually probably gonna do like two at a time. So I have some corn tortillas here. I'm just gonna take that crock pot and just dip these in there and just coat them in that same braising liquid that that meat put in all day. Drop that in the pan. I got a little chihuahua cheese here. I'm just gonna put that on top. And this is gonna be so freaking delicious. A little that, a little bit of our braised venison here. Oh my gosh. And then our onion and cilantro. Put that right on top. Now these are gonna go on this griddle for just like two minutes and then I'm gonna close it all up and then that cheese is gonna get super melty and delicious. And I'm gonna ladle some more of that sauce just into this bowl right here. And I'll serve it with that and just drizzle it right on top. Griff, what is this? It's a bit spicy is what it is. Reaper Madness, bro. Reaper Madness, hot sauce. And what are you making look to? He's just he's gonna taste. Gonna, get him on the taste. <laughs> he's got, he's Wisconsinite, you know. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. Hold on, it's coming. It hasn't even been there yet. It's back door. Just wait. Oh, oh here it comes. Yeah. This is burning my throat. Yeah, see, I told you. <coughs> Just wait. <laughs> I could not eat that on something. Why? Just ate it by itself. Yeah. Yeah, and it was a micro drop. I guess <laughs> in my throat. <laughs> <That's a secret. laughs> hey, what you can do? Hey, hey. <laughs> The floor's not lava. Right? <laughs> the floor's not lava. <laughs> that's a children's game, Griff. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> How are you gonna cure that, Luke? The only way I'm gonna be able to cure that is this mint flavored milk. Where'd you find that? <laughs> Quick trip. From the trip. What I mean, it? it tastes great now after that spice, but honestly, it's probably like a 5.6 overall. Did you explain it in the car as? Eating a candy cane and then some milk. Yeah, I was hoping for like a melted mint ice cream taste, but it's more like eating a candy cane and then drinking some milk. It's just very underwhelming. It's a culinary experience, really. <laughs> All right, so I'm just getting this last one finished up here. We got a ton more meat left, so we'll see how many we can crush. But. I these are all the birria tacos all made up right here. I'm gonna see if I got a little spoon action here. Let's use the ladle. And just take a little bit of that sauce and just boom. Heck yeah. All right, so that's it. That's how to put together some venison birria tacos. And I think we're gonna get to eating these right now. This is stellar. I will take this over fish tacos any day. This is incredible. All right, so we're done for the night, Pink? Yeah, I think we're just gonna make up a few more of these tacos and just see where the night takes us here. You know, things are good. What do you think, Luke? Excellent. Very yeah, you're good. absolutely amazing. Would you like to have Reaper Madness on your taco? No. Come uh, on. Griff just poured like... Hey, I just had a whole bunch. It's pretty good. Get a little spicy, but... 
Mint milk. Mint milk. That's what we'll leave you with for the night. We will see you tomorrow. And always remember, mint milk. And after this moment, the boys did not run into any more significant bites in the upper peninsula of Michigan. They tried, but ultimately they failed. So they came back to Minnesota to regroup and prepare for their biggest trip of their careers. And speaking of being back in Minnesota, on February 11th from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., we will be having a Break Your PB St. Jude fundraiser at Giesenbroy Beer Co., where we will be raffling off a clam hub house, a Vexlar flasher, Vexlar cameras, and one of each of our Crappie Chronicle Thorn Brothers custom rods. Come on down, enjoy the night, and more details will be posted. But now, back to the video. Hello, everybody, and obviously, uh, we are not in the UP of Michigan anymore. The end of our trip kind of sucked. We got into some good fish at the beginning, but just kind of left us a little achy and wanting more, to be honest. But we're back home. We got a really big trip coming up soon. I got some last-minute things I need to get, so we are at the one and only Thorn Brothers. We do have merch drop number two still out. It's probably going to be done soon. These hats are going really quick, so make sure you grab yourself one. But right now... I'm going to run into Thorn, get a little bit of tackle, because we got to go. Okay, first things first, I need a cart. There we go. Now, let's do some shopping. I don't need a suit, obviously, but Thorn got some sick sales going on inside. So come get yourself a new ice armor suit. And I need tackle. That's the main reason I'm here. So we're going to go to the tackle area. Okay. First of all, you guys obviously haven't been listening to us enough because there's a ton of pinheads left in stock. And I'm going to deplete that because I need some of these white Wonder Breads. Like now. We're even going to take a couple of the bigger ones. Those will work. White Wonder Bread. Needed. Needed. And then Griff's favorite so far this year. I don't have any of them, but I need some of this pink with white dots. Here we go. Okay. Got my pinhead restock covered. Now, let's swing over here. These are not... These will not particularly fit well in my little cart, but I need a Bart's Chronicle. Boom. And I need a Waldo's Chronicle to deliver to a special guest. You guys are going to meet here fairly soon when we go on a little voyage. However, if you guys are looking for our series, I am directly in the front of the store. They're right there. Just chilling. So come get yourself one, and also you could get your own th custom rod. Okay, we need one more thing. And that is some Tikas. Because Waldo's been catching them on them lately. So, take some of these 116s. They work great for big crappies. Oh, come on. There we go. All right, now we move on. You guys are looking for a new Vax. Currently got sales going on, so you can get a 30 for the same price as a 28. That is the unit Waldo uses. Right there. Look at that. Oh, okay, and over by the rods, um, I, I do not need one of these, but this, this is the reel you guys all ask about. That's the reel we're using. Ice Spooler Elite. There are some other reels you can use that are in lines but we particularly love that one and then here is the reel for griff's rod that is a schoolie if you get one of griff's rods you get this too so just know that you're getting a combo with griff's rod so you might as well go get it very good for finicky bites okay i've got my stuff however i got one more thing i need to grab we're gonna set this up front all right, and I'm gonna come back here. I can hop back here, because the guys told me I can't, not like I typically can, but 
Something cool to show you. I've got a new custom rod from Thorn Brothers. So, Thorn, obviously, they make our Chronicle series, but they can make any ice rod you want. This one I got made. It's a perch sweetheart, but I made it specifically for lighter walleyes, bigger perch, honestly, bigger crappies. I might tangle with one out uh, where we're going with this rod. But if you don't like our series, you want something a little bit different, Thorn can do that. They can make it completely custom for you. And I got all these custom rods right here. Heading out to the boys. And now the real question is, what do you think these big meat sticks are for? Huh? I don't know if we're gonna get a film it because there's like zero ice, but got some rods for some pretty big fish. Hopefully we have enough ice to do it, but could be cool. Anyways, okay, so I got that custom rod I showed you guys earlier. And something cool that Thorn does, and like I need a new reel on it, and I'm lazy, and I don't want to spool up my own rod. So, what I got here is good old Michael is going to spool it up for me. You can get whatever line you want. They got their little spooling station. I'm going to swing behind here to show you guys it, but it's going to be all rigged and ready for me to go fishing. So, when you swing into Thorn Brothers, get your own custom rod or one of our rods. You can just have them put the line on. It's way easier that way. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. Obviously, we are not in the UP anymore. Uh, we kind of got our brains beat in on the, on the end of that trip, to be honest. It, it was really tough, but uh, we got back home. We're getting ready to go on another trip, but we got one more day where we need to shake some rust off and go catch some big. So we're out in western Minnesota on a lake that's been putting out some real big ones. And not only did we find out, uh, evidently the whole community did because there's about a thousand houses out here now. And they showed up overnight. So. We're gonna see how this goes. We're gonna show you how to catch fish on a lake where they're getting insanely pressured, which I can currently see about 50 trucks driving around. So we're gonna see how that goes. But uh, merch drop two, almost done. This is your last chance to get it. So this hat and I got my topographic sweatshirt on right here. So you can get that. It's gonna be gone shortly, but uh, we're joined by, it's me, Waldo, Pink is on the way. And then we got our homie JB here. My girlfriend Alyssa's here. and. It's just going to be a day of friends going and catching fish hopefully so we're going to get after it we got to go chase down these things because uh they definitely got spooked last night when all these uh houses showed up so let's get to it There's a tank, the Sika Mackie Minnow X, the Silky Mackie Minnow, Min oh, I can't even talk right now. The Silky Mackie Minnow XL, beautiful. That's a perfect eater right there. Let's get back down there quick. Got another fish down there. It's already racing up to meet me. There's another good one. Get back down there. The silky is just doing its job. Ooh, they're already coming back. Doink. They're doinking. Absolutely on fire. It's meeting me again. Oh. Another good one. All right, Waldo, talk to me. I am absolutely smashing them right now. Watch this. I'm gonna get back down there. Oh, it's already meeting me. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oof. 
Bye bye. Eaters are flying up the hole right now. We're in like five foot of water, super shallow. And uh, these fish are just coming unglued. Um, I'm actually using a Minnow XL with, oh, that was a good one, um, with a couple silkies in front of it to make it a little bulkier. We're fishing in some fairly dirty water right now. Um, but I just piled up five eaters super quick. I got another one down here right now. Let's see if he eats. There is a large amount of permanent ice houses out here. And a lot of times when you're fishing in shallow water and there's a lot of permanent ice houses, anytime you find a gap in the ice houses, you're usually gonna be able to find fish. So what happens is all the big ice houses make noise all night long. You got generators going, vehicles pulling in and out. So a big thing that we like to do is find the gaps or the holes in the ice houses where there's no one at. And oftentimes those little areas are significantly quieter than what you might find in the big group of ice houses. A lot of times those fish just simply push into those areas and you can just quickly whack and stack like this. It makes it real easy almost. Uh, that's actually like the number one thing that we look for when we're, you know, basin trolling for small, small shallow water lakes and stuff. You typically will find anywhere there's a gap in the ice houses, you'll find fish. Nope. Oh, about to get rocked. Wow, that's got a lot of meat. Oh yeah. Like Waldo said, they are just, I mean, coming unglued. This one's probably a bit too big to keep, to be honest. So look at that thing. I'm gonna get back down there. We found a little lane. They're definitely swimming through shallow. And I'm bulking up my presentation to try to get a bigger one. If you see that, I got a drop XL with a Mackie minnow on it, but then I put a silky on as a skirt. And in the shallow water, we found, especially with reservoir or riv river fish, we filmed it a couple times now, but they really like that bulkier presentation. So if you want to get some bigger fish, silky it up, just make it a little bit bigger. I mean, holy balls. <laughs> They're just so thick. I literally tried to stop and start my GoPro in time and I already had another one. I mean, that's a perfect eater. Keep him. And we're going to keep train wrecking these things. These things are insane. We're right in the middle of, right in the middle of a gap. Literally the only place where there's not a thousand houses and they are just stacked. Freaking eighth ounce Tika. Eighth ounce Tika just got throttled. Another beautiful eater. Let's get back down there. We got a couple more fish down. Oh, Jesus. I just got rocked. There we go. The average is just insane. Holy crap. This is nuts. I got more good ones down there too. Yeah, we drilled one hole back there at the start and we're right. like, oh, I see one or two. Well, that looks like a gap. How about we go there? Drilled and we're like, oh, they're everywhere. <laughs> Weird. Oh, I swear to God, you go to that hole, you will not mark a fish. I came over here, it's been nonstop. Dude, these things are so heavy. There we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I plucked that Could one. not be more in the deucer. There's a good one. That one can be a half too go. big to keep. <laughs> That's a good one, though. That one came on a snowdrop. Okay. With a Jamie X. Everyone so is torching them. Oh my everything. god! Look this at is this ribbon leech flutter spoon, literally in its throat. Yeah. Oh my god! This, this thing. This is like a 13. I gotta that get this back. That one I got back. a little deep. I'm gonna keep that one. A little too big. Pink just got ribbon one on leech. A ribbon leech. Oh. I just got one on a silky. I minnow. just got one on a silky too. And while those getting them on a silky, we're just, like we said, we're just beefing up our presentation for these fish. And they are one. freaking, I mean, That's they a tank. could not be flying up more This more. is ridiculous. That's this another is pig actually right there. insane. Check he just missed my out. bait. Pink sucked up. Oh, he hit it so hard I didn't even see him. <laughs> he just came jumping out of the hole. This is ridiculous. This is this is actually dumb. This is insane. Okay, oh, I got like Drop 12 down, of them down here catch. right now. Like I'm already marking. It's only this is wow. I can't even see my spoon, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just watching my rod tip literally the whole time. This is absolutely 
absolute insanity. I can't even start and stop my GoPro. Just leave it. Just run it. Well, it's 20 minute loop. <laughs> oh my oh, god. <laughs> you have to stop it at some point. <laughs> this is so much fun. <laughs> Oh my god. This is crazy. This is stupid. Dude. Pink pulling These a couple out. Insane. I'm pulling a couple out. This is insane. Like that's probably a 12 and a half. Just absolutely corked that okay, thing. That, that's Another one on the ribbon leech. I know, but I can't. Oh I can't. my god. I didn't even mark him. It's probably going to eat now that <laughs> oh I threw it god. back. <laughs> I mean, just yeah. inhaling These fish are just that drop XL with the silky. Hey, all I got to say is the is this is unreal. Griff is missing a ton. Yeah, I will say, right Griff, now. he failed this to show up today. <laughs> hey, I'll just get that one back. Holy balls. Boy. This shouldn't down. take long. He's coming out bad, I think. Got him. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Every single one is a freaking stud. Every drop, literally. All right, I'm literally smashing them right now. There's another one down there. I'm dropping that leech flutter spoon on the Pink's Chronicle rods, and this is sick because you can absolutely jack them. They're coming up really hot on it right now, but as soon as they hit it, you can just torch them. <laughs> In the shallow water, it's cool because you can get their head up. Oh my God. Oh, got him. <laughs> he broke me off in the hole, but luckily there's like 20 inches of ice, so got my spoon back, but that's another horse right there get them back but this rod is super nice for that shallow water stuff because you can get their head up really quick so they don't get down underneath the edge of that ice on you i gotta retie because i just broke that one off in the hole but i luckily got him back with a wet arm <laughs> and what are you catching my wall about the smallest one that i've caught oh look at how choked that silky is oh my goodness when we're fishing these river systems like this here i'll get this guy back to show you so we love using the silkies as almost like a little jig skirt to it it helps bulk up the presentation move more water and it helps them find it a little bit easier so we usually we don't do this too often but when we need a bulky big bait big presentation big fish so shallow water dirty water can really help them find it a little bit easier so today silky's been the deal oh my god <laughs> That was sick. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Nice one. Sick. Dude, just thick as hell. Waldron. <laughs> Blimp. All right, we're on an absolute wide open bite right now. I just caught my biggest one of the day. Uh, I got a bunch of eaters on the ice. I'm gonna let this one go. Even in a lake like this where we're absolutely demolishing them and the population's obviously super high, we're gonna let these bigger ones go. Uh, just try to keep those genetics of those bigger ones in there. It, take, it takes a long time for them to get to that size. And if they're getting plucked off, they don't get that big. So we're keeping a bunch of like 10 to 12s right now, um, but we're letting everything bigger than that go. Uh, just try to keep them in here, keep this population as crazy as it is right now. Can't believe how many guys are out here, but uh, I mean, these fish are just absolutely nuts. I don't even know what to say about it. So I'm gonna get back down there and uh, try to get a bigger one. There's a white. White? There's a whitey. We've got a white crappie now. You can see it by these bars going down. This is a true purebred white. Gosh, all these fish are just so thick. And one thing I love about whites is how aggressive they are. And look at this. Absolutely torqued. And that's an eighth ounce pinhead. That's not the little one. Tika. That's or, a Tika. Excuse me. Eighth ounce Tika. I'm so used to saying pinhead. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is an eighth ounce Tika. But that is a beautiful little white crappie. Get them back down. Oh my god. <laughs> that is an eighth ounce Tika. Absolutely choked. <laughs> All I know is thank really god I have these tung this tungsten tool because that is it's just deep. That is absolutely gone. Oh yeah. Since I broke that spoon off, I haven't had as much success with the, I mean, they're still eating this thing like crazy, but they're not coming in as aggressively. These is another just eater one. But 
with that spoon, they were coming in just vapor trailing up and knocking slack in my line. I switched to the Drop XL. They're still eating it, but not as aggressively. They're kind of coming up more neutral on it. They're still eating it because they're just ridiculous right now. But I think I'm going to go tie on another spoon. Waldron's just steady stacking on that Tika behind me. Another solid one. Yes. This is sick. <laughs> Absolutely. Sorry, Griff. <laughs> Griff's guiding. So if you want to book a guide trip with him, you can. You can catch some of these with him just beautiful fish oh my gosh this is absolutely ridiculous this is probably one of the best bites i've ever been on and when i can power fish them with a tika minnow nothing beats it i'm using pink's rod it is so perfect for this tika minnow it's not even funny it uh it's super forgiving so when you give her the beans you can absolutely just train wreck them with the hook set and it loads so it doesn't pop that hook out of their mouth at all Tika smash. Here's a solid one. Oh yeah. Boom. That's a stud. Heck yeah. All right, I've been starting to fish with a Tika more. Like I said, I, I, I just wanted to kind of upsize to try to get on some little bit better fish and uh, put that Tika down. And, oh my God. <laughs> it's, I have a Tika just sitting down there and one just showed up on it. But I dropped down there, jigged it for like two minutes. We kind of had the school leave us a little bit. Okay, that was just a dead stick Tika <laughs> while I was talking. But this one, I'm gonna bump it really quick. It's an absolute thick mama. The mouth closed, 13 and a quarter. Solid fish right there. See if we can get one that's like 15 plus, because look at the build on these things. I would love to see one over 15 out of this lake. This is crazy. So I'm gonna let this one go and let this one go. <laughs> That was super sick. But on that pink rod with the Tika, you can just pound it on the spot. And when they hit it, the whole end of the rod just goes thunk. They're so aggressive right now. So I got a hot pink Tika on there and I'm working it really aggressively. Just pounded it on the spot and that thing's just jumping around down there. And then when they commit on it, they're just knocking slack. So you really have to crank them. That's where this backbone in this rod is really nice. You can just load it up and they're totally screwed. There's so many hooks on this thing. Sick. Okay, so a little update. Um, it's been about an hour since we absolutely train wrecked those fish. And needless to say, they, they did not enjoy that. They left. So um, we kind of looked around the area with a bit of live and they're flying. So all we're going to do is just make a minor adjustment. Like we talked about, you want to find the gaps in these big groups of houses. There's plenty of fish around. That's very evident from what we've seen. So we're just going to go hop further down this break of a thousand houses, Waldo? Yeah, something like that. I don't know, so many houses. And we're just gonna look for the next gap and start fishing there. In terms of structure, all, all we're doing is just riding the main river channel, nothing crazy. So just riding the edge of it and go find a gap, find some more fish. There he is. Oh. Ooh, solid one. Hell yeah. Oh. First drop with the Tika. Just corked it. Bart's on right in front of me. We kind of landed on another school Ooh. here. We had a little bit of a Oh, they're, they're here. We they're just, freaking here. We have been jumping around a ton thinking I just found another school, Tika Minnow. When they're getting the front hook, that's when you know they're eating it real good. Oh, that's a big one. Yep. Oh, yeah. Down its throat. You got to be joking. Bump, bump Stud. Bump Camera's in my passenger seat. Get this thing back. We're going to bump this one. Oh, my goodness. They are just stacked down there. That is a stud black. way bigger oh my god dude look at this look at this oh bart just got one too look, look at, at that the tikas are just on the drop loaded. on the drop you oh, can't even see dude, that tika because it it's gone it took it off the screen 
it's gone. Like you guys can't see that, it's gone. Oh, look, get here and drop down. Yeah, they're piled. There's so many. Oh boy, yeah. Dude, look at this teacup. Look at that thing. Could not be more in hail. Okay. Right. Got the teak out of mine. We got to film tanks. Okay, so we just started kind of trolling around. Basically, we we're drilling tons of holes. I just caught this freaking moose right here. I'm gonna let it go really quick. I'm gonna bump it and just see what we got. I just want to get it back. Uh, right at 13. Just a stud. Look at the hump on its freaking head. I'm gonna let this one go. I was just marking again. Me and Bart doubled up. Literally, we're 10 feet apart in the holes. We've been moving around because the, the school that we were sitting on initially kind of broke up and uh, we haven't been able to find them grouped together again. So we've just been moving. We probably covered like, I don't know, three quarters of a mile of this area. And we just got onto another area that they were wadded up again. We drilled on top of them, they sat still and we just freaking knocked their heads in. And now we're gonna try to get on them again. I think they just slid over because we made a bunch of commotion there. But we really want to try to find a big one, so we upsized the teak. We're just using teakas now. We just want a big one. You saw those two absolutely throated it. That's exactly what we want. I think they're going to get really aggressive here. It seemed like it died down, but I think we just weren't around the right fish. But now we are, so let's make it happen. Solid one. The school just freaking came through here. I had like five, oh, there's still one down there. I'm just gonna get this one back and drop right back down. That other mark looks way bigger. Try to make it happen, oh, they're still sitting here. Come on. Got him. That one did look bigger, but we'll see. Oh yeah. That's a solid one. Get up here. Nope. <laughs> Going the wrong way. Get up here. There we go. Maybe like an 11. They're just stacked. Oh boy. God, they're eating this thing so good. That treble hook is lethal. Yeah, they're here. If you want to just come here. Just drop in this one. Every time I pull one up, they're just come right in again. Oh, Ooh, plucked that, up. That was a, like a grown one. He's still there. He's passed. He's passed. That's a good mark though. If he just does it. Come on. Got him. Oh, yeah. Solid one again. Get down there. Alright, we're just gonna go back to back on this hole right now. Oh, get down in the snow on me. Another one. Freaking just coming unglued. I can't believe how hard they're getting this thing. You got him? This might be large. Nope. <laughs> he like hit the, it so hard. He I swiped at it. it. These things have so many hooks on them. They just get so pinned. There's oh. so many around here. Get right back down. Oh There's my god. There's just a ton of them. This is the nutty, right dude. All right, come on. Come on, give us a giant. All right. No, no, they left. All right, folks, that is it. We are done for the day. Um, got to head home. One, the wind's kind of getting up, so that's annoying. Two, got to leave in the morning for an unbelievably long trip. You guys have some really sick videos coming. We're really excited about it. It's going to be by far the biggest swing for the fences the Chronicles have ever done, but it should be a good time. Today, Silky, Tika Minnow, Ribbon Leech, right, Pink? Ribbon Leech, Ribbon Leech caught them. I mean, it was an awesome shallow water, big fish bonanza. We had a great time catching them on stuff that uh, we like fishing when we're really shallow. So definitely check that out at Thorn Brothers. But for now, we're gonna hit the road and the next time you see us, uh, we're gonna be on the other side of the country. So stay tuned, you won't be pissed, I promise. This is a 40 call with a flight 5509.
Now boarding main cabin three. This time I'd ask Lighthouse, please spray the cabin floor arrival. Right. 